Hi, my name is John Dunning. Today I'll be taking you on a tour of some of the foods in Chatham County, and more specifically, Pittsburgh. I'll be recapping my experiences at each of four restaurants, focusing specifically on the culture of the place I'm eating at. The first restaurant I'll be focusing on is San Felipe, which is located off East Street in Pittsburgh. San Felipe was as much fun as it looked like. The waiters are unique in the fact that they all interact with you jokingly, openly. It's not such a formal environment and it's a lot of fun because of it. Even though it seems like all your friends may ever order here is ACP, the menu is actually pretty well thought out and extensive in what it offers. I ordered the San Felipe Taco Special, which the waiter actually recommended being it was one of his favorite things on the menu. I've never had it before, but I'll probably wind up getting it again. It's really good. Additionally, the service is great. The food is always out within 10 to 12 minutes of the order. Chips and salsa are served for free as soon as you sit down. The drinks are always quick to come out, and the waiters are constantly back and forth to your table making sure that you've got a full glass of whatever you're drinking and you're happy and pleased with the experience. So, in conclusion, San Felipe isn't the type of place you might want to take uh, somebody on a job interview or uh, anniversary date your significant other, but if you're looking for a place to go with the family, on a casual date, maybe bring a friend, or even grab some food on a lunch break or when you have some personal downtime, it's a great way to liven up your day, add some fun to it, and experience a little bit of the Pittsburgh food culture. The second place I'll talk about today is s and Soda Shop. It's been around just about forever. It's a real center of attention in Pittsburgh. It actually used to be an old pharmacy and it preserved a lot of the history inside the building. If you've never been, your first time to S&T's will definitely be a memorable experience. It's really like no other restaurant. It's very unique in the way that they go about business. The entire place really does have an old timey feel that goes right along with the architectural theme and it's just an all around fun time to be there. Unfortunately, the restaurant was closed the day I planned to review it and stop by, but I've been here plenty of times, so it's no problem to tell you guys about it. Like I mentioned earlier, that night, early 1900s old-timey feel is really the draw-in at s and You come here to eat food, of course, as you do at any other restaurant, but you really come here for an entire experience. It's a great place to bring a family or go casually with just one or two friends or go alone, similar to San Felipe, but this is a little different in the fact that it's really genuine Pittsburgh culture. This place has been here since Pittsburgh became prominent, and you'll often see a lot of local Pittsburgh high school students from Northwood High School working here, and most adults seem somewhat native to Pittsburgh and familiar with the culture that it entails. Now moving on to the menu, it's your typical hamburgers, sandwiches, hot dogs. There's even a pretty good quesadilla and a couple other oddball menu choices for this type of restaurant. But the real reason people come is for the ice cream. I've had a quite a few milkshakes in 17 years of living and I really do think s and milkshakes blow pretty much every other milkshake I've ever had out of the water. I don't really think there's even that much room for comparison. So, to conclude, I think my favorite thing about s and is the fact that you can walk in middle of the day on Saturday, ask for a milkshake and be out in five minutes walking down courthouse streets in Pittsburgh enjoying your beverage or cold ice cream. Compared to the other places I've ate, I think s and is really the center of Pittsburgh food culture. It might have something to do with the fact that it's been around probably the longest. s and really does represent everything that Pittsburgh's dining experience has to offer. Alright, now it's time to talk about the place that I enjoyed eating at the most. This place is a little bit more hole in the wall and not always the type of place to be packed on a weeknight. I'm sure they have busy weekends, but the food is absolutely phenomenal. I think most customers order takeout, but if you ever have time to sit down or take out or just eat this food in general, you won't regret taking time out of your days to stop in at Allen & Sons Barbecue.
at Allen and Sons, they've definitely put effort. Well, it might not be effort. It might just be what comes naturally to these people. But it definitely gives off that rural southern feel. And what better way to do it than at a barbecue place? Maybe if the pig carved into the podium didn't convince you, you should go try some of their deep fried corn on the cob, which turns out to be absolutely delicious, by the way. As far as service goes, the place was a bit slow. Um, food didn't take too long, but things like refills and waiting to give our order did take a little longer than it should have. But the food did make up for any shortcomings the service may have had when we first arrived. It was absolutely phenomenal. I ordered a barbecue platter with a side of hush puppies, french fries, and deep fried corn on the cob with a sweet tea. As you can see in the picture, the sweet tea is gone because, like I said, the drinks were a bit slow on refills for whatever reason. But I think this may be my favorite barbecue I've ever had. And, and the all-around meal was so delicious that I'm confident in saying this is my favorite eating experience for this project. Now, Allen & Sons Barbecue does stick with our trend of non-formal Pittsburgh restaurants, but that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with this place, and I would highly recommend taking somebody who hasn't been, because if they like barbecue, they'll like Allen & Sons. The fourth and final restaurant I'll talk about is Burley's Grill, which is probably my favorite place to go to breakfast, not only in Pittsburgh, but anywhere. It's not the type of restaurant you're going to walk into and be immediately impressed with, Although if you do decide to order food, you will become impressed. It's just got that quality of dining that you can't get at a chain restaurant. There's something about privately owned restaurants that just produce better, more hearty meals. And Verley's is no exception to this trend. So while I did say this is my favorite place to eat breakfast, it's not just a breakfast place. It's a great place to go eat lunch or dinner with the family. Once again, it's another semi-casual place. This might be the most formal place out of the four, but I don't think it would be appropriate to call any of the restaurants I've talked about today formal. The thing I like most about Verley's is probably the servers. They're mostly older women who are very kind and talkative, often will try and start conversation, and occasionally a couple old men as well. They're all open to talk, and they really add to that homey, feeling that, that you just can't get at a chain restaurant like I was talking about. It goes along the same way it does with the meals. You can't get the same sort of service and you can't get the same sort of food at chain restaurants as you can at a place like Furley's. Now as far as the menu goes, it's pretty well rounded. It's similar to s and in the way that they have um, you know, your typical uh, American southern foods, but it does have <laughs> Once again, a quesadilla and a couple other oddball type of foods. There's some um, pretty good chicken wings here. Also, the Philly cheesesteak for lunch is awesome. And then, of course, for breakfast, which is my favorite, I would definitely recommend an omelet, or you can just go traditional with pancakes. Those are always great. To conclude, my favorite part about Burley's probably has to be the fact that it's its own place. There really aren't any other places like it that I've been to. And while, you know, there's food served like this in all sorts of restaurants, it's just... It represents Pittsburgh's food culture well, and is a unique and important part of Pittsburgh in general, not just the food culture either, and I value that. Thanks for watching and learning a bit about the food culture of Pittsburgh. I look forward to seeing you guys at some of the restaurants around town.